Hello and welcome. Today we're going to show you a quick and easy method to grow your own tomatoes using already existing ripened tomatoes. Today we're going to be working with two varieties of tomatoes, some recycled pots, some premium soil, and a kitchen knife. Oftentimes you will watch instructional videos on YouTube and the technique for growing tomatoes will involve slicing the tomatoes and placing them into your soil. Today, I'm going to show you an alternative, easier, and faster method, which will help you cut a week of growth time from this routine and allow you to yield tomatoes faster and easier. As you see here, we're going to be working with some recycled pots. You're going to ensure that the bottom is perforated for drainage. We're also going to be working with two varieties of tomatoes, just ordinary grocery store tomatoes, as well as sweet, ripened cherry tomatoes. So, a common technique you will see on YouTube is cutting the tomatoes into slices and placing the slices into the pot. While this is a good technique, it will cause about a week of delay between when you plant the tomato slices and the sp they sprout. An alternative technique, of course, is to go to the grocery store and to buy dry seeds. This, of course, is a little bit more expensive uh, since many people already have tomatoes in their home and the seeds that you purchase are dehydrated seeds. So nevertheless, you're going to have to spend a week waiting for the seeds to plump up and to hydrate before they begin to sprout. The problem with the slice method is that you have to wait for the flesh around the seeds to rot before they start to sprout. As such, it's very easy to bypass both the hydration issue and the sprouting issue with slices to just scoop out the seeds from the inside of the tomato directly into your potting soil. This way you are bypassing the time that it's going to take for the seeds to sprout if they were dehydrated as well as the time it would take for the flesh around the tomato to rot in order to make way for the sprouting process. This way you're just taking a pre-existing tomato that you purchase at a grocery store and scooping the seeds into your potting soil. As you see here, I'm simply using the knife that I have in my hand to scoop out the seeds and to put them into the potting soil. Because tomato seeds have a very quick yield, meaning that the seeds that you plant typically all will yield and sprout, you do not need too, too many seeds per pot. So typically a large tomato like the one I'm holding now has about 40 to 50 seeds, whereas you'll need a few uh, smaller tomatoes to ensure that you're getting sufficient amount of seeds. So once I have scooped out the seeds from this medium to large ordinary grocery store tomato, you're just going to cover up the seeds with some added potting soil and that will be that. You're going to leave it in about two weeks time you're going to have sprouts. Add a little bit more water and if you wish to designate which of the seed varieties that is contained in that particular pot, you might wish to put a marker in it just so that you know which seeds are which. Next we're going to take our second pot and we're going to use it for the sweet cherry tomatoes and we're going to take several of these little tomatoes and we're going to scoop out the insides and put them into this pot. It's the same concept in principle. You're just going to slice it in half and use the flat edge of your knife to just easily scoop them into the potting soil. We're going to use a few of these tomatoes in order to achieve this, but at the end you're going to have about 40 to 50 seeds that all will likely sprout. While they all do sprout, you might wish to take a moment once they have sprouted to pick out any of the weaker ones, any of the ones that are growing a little bit more poorly, and ensure that you're working with really well sprouted, healthy plants. So as you see here, I'm just simply applying this technique and scooping out the seeds. If you have a specific tomato variety that you have in your disposal, but perhaps the time is not right to plant them, you can simply dry out the seeds and use them to plant later. As you see here, this method is very easy and it saves you about a week's worth of time between when you plant it and when you're going to be able to plant it into your soil and allow for growth. So in essence, it's one week less that you have to wait for it to sprout. 
In fact, the sprouting process happens as quickly as five days. As you see here, I have prepared these plants. It's been two weeks, and two weeks is the amount of time that it takes for these seedlings to start forming very strong and healthy root systems. As you see here, I have quite a few of these sprouted plants to work with. And once the sprouting has happened, you can take a quick peek and ensure that you remove any of the weaker, smaller plants that aren't growing quite as quickly and select the healthiest plants in order for them to be replanted. So at this point, you can transport them outside into the exterior soil. However, if you have sprouted these plants, perhaps for example in April, and there's still a risk of frost, you can transport them into a larger container which is going to be portable so that you can carry them outside and bring them inside until the weather tapers off and risk of frost is no longer a concern. So if you have sprouted these plants for example in April and your climate still allows for the possibility of there being additional frost periods, you can transport it into a larger container which you can easily bring outside into the sunlight when the weather is warm and accommodating and inside when the weather is cold and freezing so to avoid doing any damage to your plants. So as you see here I'm working with this larger container that has perforations which allows for easy drainage. This container you can find in a gardening store and as you see there are drainage and perforations at the bottom so when you water it water can easily escape. I'm using some premium soil here and I'm going to be transplanting the seedlings that I have grown into this container. Because tomatoes when they start to grow their roots, the roots grow downward, they get thicker and larger, you do want to ensure that there is some depth that permits your tomato plants to grow in this way. So I'm going to be using premium soil and I'm going to be filling this container about halfway. This is to permit for the roots to bury downwards as they grow. So as you see here, I'm just going to be using the soil and I'm going to fill this container. As already mentioned, this container is particularly ideal because it allows you to transport it outside when the weather is hospitable and inside when the weather is cold, especially in the early uh, months of the summer or perhaps late spring when you want to have this ability to transport it and avoid any frosty days that can damage the growth process and possibly kill your plants. So as you see here, I am preparing this container. Of course, when the risk of frost is no longer a concern, you can easily transplant them into your garden until they produce their tomato plants and you can harvest them. So as you see here, I am going to be transplanting these little plants that we have sprouted. But before I do that, I'm also going to go ahead and add some eggshell. So I have some crushed eggshell here. Eggshells are an excellent source of calcium and they do add an additional layer of nutrition to your soil. So I'm going to be using these eggshells and I'm going to mix them in with the existing soil to add that additional nutritional value for the plant. So as you see here, I'm just mixing it in. So whenever you use eggs, just ensure to hang on to your eggshells. So once I have prepared the soil in this way, I can go ahead and start to transplant the seedling growth. So as you see here, I'm going to gently remove the seedlings from the pot that they were planted in. And you will quickly notice upon inspection that these seedlings are developing very strong root systems already right away within two weeks. You're going to go ahead and you're to going to take little handfuls or just little, little pieces of the sprouts and you're going to plant them and you're going to separate them and you're going to go ahead and plant them into this container. 
as you see here, the root systems are already quite impressive, and this happens very quickly, especially if you bypass waiting for the slices of tomato to rot, for example, or if you are planting them right from dehydrated seeds. You're getting a quick yield. This is going to happen very quickly, and you're going to be able to transplant them and grow them out very, very rapidly. So as you see here, I'm going ahead and I'm planting them throughout this container. And once again, this is a great opportunity if you are planting different varieties of tomatoes to just note which ones are which. So for example, here I'm doing half and half. So half of the container is going to be the typical standard grocery store tomato and the other is going to be a sweet, smaller cherry tomato. And this way I'm going to be able to tell which one is which moving forward. So go ahead and plant your seedlings into the soil. And then we can move on to the next step. Once you have done this step and you have planted your seedlings into the container, you want to ensure that you have prepared your container for transportation outside. So as I have already mentioned, oftentimes you will plant your tomatoes, but the, way, the weather will not be favorable. So for example, there's still some frost that is anticipated, there are some cold days, and you are not quite ready to plant them permanently into your garden. As such, in order to create a protective barrier between your plants and the external environment, I like to use some garden wire or chicken wire to seal the plants into the container. While the plants completely have the capacity to grow throughout the holes of the garden wire, this garden wire prevents animals from digging or getting at or eating your plants, and this will ensure that your plants aren't going to be damaged by any of the wildlife in your garden. Now, tomatoes are toxic for a lot of plant for a lot of animal species, but that does not necessarily prevent animals from digging or trying to damage your plants. So as you see here, this is just an extra layer of protection so that you can ensure that your plants are going to grow safely and they're not going to become damaged. The good thing about garden wire is that while it does create this protective barrier, you do have the option to cut around the plant if the plant does peer out of the holes in the netting. So you just take a pair of scissors and you just cut around and remove your plant and this will not damage or injure your plant in any way. So you're going to go ahead and create this additional layer and once you have completed this step you are ready to transport it outside. So once you have purchased, brought it outside, you can go ahead and use your garden hose to gently mist the plant. You want to make sure that they are hydrated, but you don't want to oversaturate them. You want to ensure that they have adequate water, but don't drown them in water too, too much. Once you have completed this step, you are ready to allow them to grow. Of course, once the weather is more favorable, you can transplant them permanently into your garden. In a few months, you will find that your plant has produced tomatoes and you can go ahead and harvest them. Usually the turnaround period is a couple of months. So for example, I planted these in May once the frost season has dissipated and in August I had tomatoes. So as you see here, it's quick and easy and efficient. Thank you so much for watching and good luck.